Hi, I'm Jodie Lowe. I'm a director and youth worker at Free to Talk. I'm also a senior lecturer on the social care, community development and youth work programmes at the University of Northampton. Really pleased that you've opened this presentation. Please feel free to skip through and use it as you need to understand what we're finding about best practice practice for participation with children and young people. At the end of this presentation, there's some options on how you can get more involved in this project and we would love to hear your views. We've been commissioned to deliver a research project which will directly influence the future of provision of local services for children and young people within Northamptonshire's integrated care system. The integrated care system is an exciting development which will result in due course in the integration of health, social care and public health services within the county with overarching plans put into place to support the collaborative working and sharing of resources. This project's been delivered by the accessibility pillar, which is part of the strategic development for this. It's got a huge potential to make difference within the lives of the most vulnerable and disadvantaged children and young people in our county. So the project seeks to understand what the current situation with participation is and how do we hear children and young people's voices. And it aims to make recommendations at the end of this project to improve um, practice strategically and operationally. So this part of the project is a systematic literature review. So we've screened 265 peer-reviewed research articles, 56 of which were most relevant that we drew down and thematically analysed. In this presentation, we've provided a summary of these findings for you. The main themes that came out um, were around relationships and power, we've got trusted spaces, the participation journey for children and young people, um, the practicalities and what's needed from our practitioners and facilitators around the participation of children and young people. At the end of this presentation, there's also some examples of projects that we found in the research which we thought might interest you. So what is participation? So from the research that we've reviewed, we've seen various models and concepts that are trying to explain what participation is. Um, in the main, there's concepts that they're using, Einstein's and Hart's ladders of participation, or Shears' pathways into participation. What we see as the um, outset, beginning of the journey, or the lowest levels of participation might be that young people and children are consulted um, on topics and maybe that they initiate um, the projects or the priorities for the work that practitioners or professionals do with them. The next stage up on um, those concepts or ladders of participation are that children and young people are much more involved in their own decision making. That might be about their own care, their health. Um, so on that real personal level, or it could be that they're deciding on um, interventions with their peers, community, um, the schools, um, or they may even be involved in some form of governance which gives them that decision-making power. At the highest and I suppose the most deepest level of participation, the literature really gave us examples of social action that mainly young people were taking on high item issues and like climate change. We saw that young people are being either paid or voluntary delivery agents so they might be part of the service or organisation actual delivery with their peers and um, given that uh, researchers complete the research there was lots around young researchers and being able to really understand, analyse and um, really um, gather the data for research around children and young people's issues and lots of this could be the paid or voluntary roles absolutely fundamental to best practice in participation. Relationships and power came up time and time again in the research we were reviewing. So not only did children and young people need the trusted adults within the participation experience, but adults needed to trust the children and young people. So there needed to be that mutual respect and value 
for each other's contributions within that participation process. Similarly, power dynamics really need to be focused on and shifted and facilitated within that relationship. So we clearly understand that children and young people come in to um, our services with less power, come into our rooms, come into our offices with less power um, than the adults that are supporting them and trying to listen and understand them. So we really have to pay close, close attention. How do we shift that power dynamic? How do we put young people in um, the favor of control? The second two, the last two points are about transparency. Um, children and young people were clearly saying in the research that that transparency and the practitioners and facilitators too were saying actually transparency in decision making, being honest, saying what can be acted on, what can't be. So having some real understanding of actually where decision making power really is within that participation experience was key. Lastly, seeing children and young people as whole people, so not just contributors to that project, but being able to support them on a wider scale was important for effective participation, being able to support any additional needs or um, events going on within their lives is needed. And if you think about the different types of issues or topics we ask children and young people to be involved in, commonly there may be um, additional needs for them that need to be supported. Building on the last point made around relationships and power, trusted spaces came up as fundamental. So having those spaces and places that children and young people build their relationships, build their communication, build their contact with um, facilitators, practi practitioners or researchers is really important. So environment is key either to shifting that dynamic or, or building those relationships. So children and young people's experience of that participation journey is obviously very important. So children and young people within the research were saying that clear expectations, roles and ground rules were important for that best experience. For those experiences to be empowering through the opportunity. So for those to experiences to actually be the intervention to build self-confidence, develop their skills and feel that they can take action was important for them to have that good experience. Participation opportunities also need to be flexible. So research tells us that actually we should be offering experiences that children and young people can dip in and out of as and when they need to. Um, and that we need to do that with care and consistent welcome to those children and young people. So depending on the opportunity for participation that we're offering, we need to ensure that we have that planned flexibility within there to engage um, in a child and young person youth-led way. The research also told us that higher levels of participation are achieved when children and young people are, are fully able to express themselves and that may not be through a group discussion or a one-to-one -one discussion or interview. Lots of the methods showed much more creativity, so drawing, painting, writing, theatre, photography, filming, those sorts of things were much more engaging and motivating through for children and young people. They want their sessions to be engaging and entertaining, to be these positive experiences. One piece of research that we looked at was within early years and it looked at teaching that was child led. So it looked at how teachers could invite, cultivate, encourage participation in designing um, children's curriculums of education by being very observant as a teacher and being able to pick out those points of um, growth from the children, child's initiated um, topics or interests. For older young people, motivation to take part in that participation journey is much more about the interest in the topic. It could be about their personal health experiences, life experiences that have motivated them to want to have their voices heard on those topics. It may be about general altruism and doing something good for society, 
or it could be about learning, growing, um, and maybe even career development. Lots of enablers, so the practicalities around good participation are as we expect. So those incentives, transport, food and breaks, those types of things, those practicalities um, came really clearly through in the research. Good communication that's child and young person friendly. So um, using things, systems like WhatsApp, um, the systems that children and young people are already using, really important to maintain the stuff that we've already talked about, the transparency, um, the openness, the relationship building. Role models also came up, so peer role models as well as role models within the facilitators and practitioners. Um, and clearly, time, budget, resource were um, evident within the research, which often and commonly is one of our barriers to Interestingly, um, participation right from the get go, so from the start of the project should be um, children and young people should be involved. Um, and also being really realistic about the time that um, commitment, both from practitioners, facilitators, but also for the children and young people, having a good understanding of what um, that realistically means is important, having participation as a clear role or responsibility as a practitioner enables the process. Obviously sessions also need to be at times when children and young people are about um, so that's not necessarily our usual working day but those times around um, evenings, weekends um, that children and young people are much more available. One of the interesting points that came out in the research was also to be really clear about what the disc benefits might be so there were some points raised around the burden of participation. So I suppose that's around the opening of awareness around the issues that children, and young people face, the injustices and um, that raising of awareness needs to be managed in quite a supportive way, particularly if there is a raft of complex needs for children, and young people. For practitioners and facilitators, some key areas came up within the review. Practitioners and facilitators need to be dedicated and committed. Value for co-production, for participation has to be very apparent um, and that needs to be obvious in behaviours um, with children and young people. Alongside that, um, Project management skills obviously um, needed to come into play, as well as specialist understanding of the needs of the children and young people we're trying to engage in these projects um, and understanding of their context, of their worlds, or being able to facilitate um, discussions to be able to immerse ourselves in understanding what those contexts really mean to children and young people. So some very specialist knowledge, but that value, commitment and dedication, very apparent. The next slides just give you some examples of participation projects. If you click on the images that are on these slides, then it takes you to links to each example with a bit more detail. This example here on iWrites Juries is a great example of a really creative approach around debating some complex stuff on rights around and digital rights for young people. This project gives us a really good example of being transparent, so setting those clear expectations, roles um, for young people before they choose to sign up and get involved. The involved principles came up frequently within our research, gives a great summary for the underpinnings of participation with young people, something we need to consider in our local work here. It was great to see this publication and it being engaging in its format, but also brilliant to see the consideration of the dis-benefits there may be for participation, so the weight of um, knowledge and awareness that's created through youth participation and activism. So what's happening next within this project? Well, 
on the 20th of May and the 27th of May, we're inviting practitioners to the University of Northampton to discuss this systematic review and to really shape up what's happening here locally and what can we do to create a good strategy for the future. We also would like children and young people to have their say on this too. So you can either nominate children or young people that you currently work with using this Google Docs link, or you can email us and we will send out one of our team to come and speak to an already formed group of young people or young leaders to give their views on this systematic review.